Hello and welcome to a video guide on how to build Freddy's Dolphin. Um, this is a kite by Freddy Stapersma from the Netherlands. Apologies if my uh, Dutch pronunciation is rubbish. Um, it's been manufactured in a kit by Peterling Kites in New Zealand and some great instructions have been made by Leong Chi Wan, which says C1 in brackets, which I guess is a better pronunciation. So um, yeah, this is just a video guide going through all the steps on how to build it. Um, I've been making kites for quite a long time, mainly soft kites. So um, I've done things like this before, but I'm by no means an absolute expert. So if there's anything that I say that you think's a bit wrong, please let me know and I can try and change it or do better next time. Um, so as you can see, I've split the video up here so that it's uh, split screen. So we've got a bit that I've tried to zoom in on the sewing machine and then like an overview of the table I was using. You can see I'm just opening up the kit now, having a look for what bits to start with. So I'll kind of talk you through it as we go along. So the first bits that you're going to do are the eyes. So you can see those white pieces in the center of the table there that I've got out. And then you also want to find the uh, black pupils. So um, when I, I don't know what I did when I was opening the pack here, but I think I dropped one in all the other black. So I thought there was one missing, as you can see. <laughs> so um, I skipped a bit there where I went off and opened another pack that I had and uh, got one out of there. But later on, I'll find it in a bit, you'll see. So what I'm doing here is just using a bit of Pritt stick, which is like a glue stick, which I think it, that sort of thing's available everywhere. Just put a few dabs on and then sort of try and get the eye sort of central to that top curve. Um, but don't have it right up to it. Leave a bit of space because that looks nicer. The other thing about these white pieces is they're not uh, symmetrical. So I I think it kind of fades off towards the rear more. So sort of the narrower angle is towards the rear. So make sure you do it uh, sort of mirrored. But I think when I did my first kit, I didn't pay that much attention to it. So I'm not sure what happened, but it looks okay nevertheless. So yeah, this is the second kit that I've made. Um, I did the first one to see how it went and I think it took about four and a half hours and then I've done this one. It's probably more like three and a half hours once I had an idea of what was going on. So you'll see this is still quite a long video, about one hour, 46 minutes. Um, but I have sped up some of the sewing bits, so hopefully you won't fall asleep. <laughs> you can just fast forward to any bits of interest. So with the eyes here, the first one that I've done sewing the pupil down, I've just done it in one go. You can see I'm just holding everything flat and just sort of curving the material around as I stitch. And then there's a slightly different method that I've done for the second one, uh, just to show you. Do back stitches um, at the start and finish each time so that hopefully it won't come apart in the sky. So cut your thread off. I mean, a lot of this is basic. I guess most people who are making this kit have already made some kites before, so you'll have an idea. So this second one, because it's a small curve, I'm doing lots of little straight stitches. So I do a back stitch at the start, then go forward, lift the foot up a little bit, go forward a bit more, and keep doing that going round. And that might be easier for some people, um, especially if you haven't got a walking foot or one of these faff, I think it's IDG feet, to stop the material puckering up a bit. I'll talk about that a bit more as, we, um, as the video goes on, because there'll be opportunity for that. So there you go, there's the two eyes.
The other thing to say is I'm not affiliated in any way with Peter Lynn or Freddie or Tug, as you can see, I'm wearing a Tug (laughs) t-shirt. Um, so yeah, anything I tell you that's wrong or if it makes you screw up, it's all my fault. Nothing to do with Peter Lynn. So yeah, there's a lot of time where I'm just sort of standing there wondering what to do. Um, so I guess that'll be the same for everyone. So I'm just trying to find the next pieces. So there's these long, small black pieces that you want to find. Um, all these shapes are in the instructions as well. So it's quite easy to follow. You can see with this one, you want to go to the end that hasn't got the little pip hanging off, which is where you'll um, place one of the uh, bridle tabs when you get to that position. So also for placement of the eyes, there's a little template which is cut out of ripstop as well, which is pretty cool. Mine's all a bit creased and folded up, so you might want to iron it on a low heat if you really want to get this perfect. But I just kind of used it to get an idea where the eye goes. Um, But because the curves meet or match the same sort of curves that you've got on the black piece, it's pretty easy to place anyway. You kind of just want to make sure you move it inboard um, by a, a decent amount. So when you do the seams later on, on this piece, which I think are 10 millimeters, let me go forward. Yep, a 10 millimeter seam. So you want to make sure it's inboard from the edge more than 10 millimeters, you know, probably bring it in about 15 or so, um, so that when you attach the other piece to it, it doesn't go over the white of the eye. So again, just using the glue stick, I think I just put a little bit in the middle, some in the corners, just to hold it down into place. Again, I think people have said they can struggle with things like this, um, with it sort of puckering up a bit and on some of the other seams. So you might want to pin it down a bit if you're not sure i don't know how much of it is that i've been doing this for a long time or how much is it is that i've got this little uh special foot which pulls the material through from the top as well which i think you can get on a lot of the faf sewing machines um other sewing machines you can get that are good for it are ones that have like a fully walking foot so that top foot moves along as well and it, it helps to pull the material through through the top as well so you can see on my sewing machine on the left hand side near the foot there's this black piece sticking down if you watch that when i'm sewing you'll see how it pulls the material through as well and this machine i'm using is about 22 years old i think um and it still works great only recently have i decided to get it serviced actually when i was making this kite it started squeaking a bit so um yeah i'm gonna have it's gonna have its mot and service <laughs> You can see that foot pulling it through though, so it really helps. And this is the first time I've sped it up so that you're not going to fall asleep. So it's just go around that edge, stitching it down. And you'll see the way I'm holding it all the time is to try and keep everything flat and make sure nothing's puckering up, holding all the pieces and kind of stretching them out a bit with my fingers. Again, every seam do the back stitch and forward stitch. Just in case it starts to unravel when you're flying it. And for things like this, I always cut that start bit of thread off because otherwise it can get all snarled up and look a bit messy. But again, it's a common thing to say once something is actually flying and it's a few meters away from you, most of these little mistakes and bits of puckering you won't see. So when it's really up in the sky, you know, like 10, 20 meters away, no one's going to notice anything. So it, also because this is, um, you could argue whether it's a windsock or a kite uh, or line junk, but whatever you want to classify it as, um, it's not a kite that needs ultra preci- precision and sort of symmetry in order to fly well. So little differences between different parts won't make a massive difference uh, so don't worry so we're on to page three now of the instructions um, 
this is a going to attach just under where the eye is on a flat piece so this is a pretty easy seam to do um, again make sure what you're doing when it's two opposite sides is going to be mirrored so I normally get it all laid out on the table hold it together and come over to the sewing machine and then do the final alignment when I'm there so it's all on that edge um, in the instructions it says do a 10 millimeter seam there I'd say I was probably doing between 7 and 10 millimetres on everything I did. I was kind of lining up at the edge of my sewing machine foot, which is about 8 millimetres, I think, most of the time. And it's all come out okay. So again, that's not absolutely critical, but I guess it's designed for 10 mil. Yeah, and this is one of the nice and easy ones to get you started. As you're going along, uh, just make sure it's all... Um, in line so you might have to stop a few times if it's got a slight curve on it and just realign so yeah once you've done those put them to one side you'll use them again later so now we're on to doing the these fins or oh, it's a dorsal fin is it the top fin so again you're going to do a mirror image effect on two pieces now and you've got two of these big sections which are the main front piece and then you've got two uh, thinner pieces which you're going to attach on um, they give it some nice 3d shape on other kites that i've made like the whale kite and also some of my own when i've done this sort of thing i've just sewn bits together two pieces and not put the extra sort of shaping on and that looks okay but it always gives it that kind of weird sort of overstuffed pillow effect if you really uh, want to obsess about it so this is a nice little touch that Freddie's done he designed it on a 3D uh, CAD program called Blender um, which lets you shape the kite in 3D in your computer package and then it's got a nice little feature where you can um, make a pattern which takes some tinkering about within some other software but it lets you come up with these shaped edges a bit nicer than if you were just um, drawing something yourself or copying a soft toy pattern, which a lot of people like to do, myself included. <laughs> it's an easy way. So here you go. I've taken the bit, lined it up. I think this is probably your first um, bit of sewing that might be a bit more difficult because it's not just two straight pieces together. So as you see what I'm doing... I've started off on that edge and done my forward and back stitch and then I line it up a bit and you see I'm moving the top piece across each time I stop to try and keep the edges in line. And again, people have been talking about pinning things. It feels like it would be difficult to pin it, you know, on these sort of shapes to me, but it might help you, especially if you're getting the puckering where the top isn't being pulled through at the right rate. I mean, you can see what I'm doing here as well. I'm holding the material beyond the foot together and I'm not kind of pulling it. I'm just sort of guiding it through and it helps to keep everything in line. Um, and I don't know if that would help you if you had these other sort of machines without the walking foot feature. And then the end feels a bit more funny because it's a tight curve but just try and do the best you can lining it up and I, I don't know if you noticed that um, there was about five mil or so uh, where it didn't line up I might show that in a second there you go I'm trying to show it a little bit there so even with that sort of foot it's like that so I don't know whether it's part of the pattern that causes it or my sewing technique <clears throat> But it did this on the previous kit and on this one. And in the end, it looks absolutely perfect. You wouldn't know. Um, so don't worry about it. And apologies if you can hear any loud noises. I've got two young boys who have just got back from school and they're very excited. So <laughs> there'll be some appearances from them in the video. So here you go. I sped it up again for this one because it's the same sort of thing. The other thing you might notice is I really prefer having the material on the left side of the foot. So when I do most seams, I turn it around the other way on the mirrored side. So I'm sort of 
sewing opposite, which is probably bad practice because it might mean if you are getting uneven feed of the material, it won't be symmetrically uneven. Each side will be different. But again, it doesn't really matter. It's uh, It all goes together nicely when you join it all up. So here I am just scratching my head what to do again. You can hear the cogs turning. <laughs> And I think I need to go and get the little, one of the little ribbon tabs, which should be in the little plastic packet that you've got. I think you should have four of those. So you can see, if you look on the instructions on page four, you'll see at the top, there's a little marker everywhere where you need to put these ribbons, which is a pretty nice way of doing it. Um, so you can either sew that in to hold it in place before you join the two bits together or like I do I kind of bring it all together and start the seam off first and then put the ribbon in then and sew backwards and forwards over it quite a lot and when I did it I moved um, outwards into the um, sort of excess material and went backwards and forwards just to hold it in place it's pretty new to me actually putting these ribbons on because for a long time I've been trying to use the sort of super rip stop effect that Peter Lynn uh, sort of pioneered over the years where you sew bits of line into the rip stop and make crosses of the line in like a grid pattern where you're going to attach your bridles with a little Dacron reinforcement there. Um, but I guess for these little kites, this is absolutely fine. I know other manufacturers use tabs. Like I'd seen the Rolo kites, dragons and lionfish, they have tabs on, I think, in places. And also it's used on some power kites I've got, so it can't be that bad. We'll have to see if it rips out. But then again, I don't actually... I seem to spend more time making kites than flying kites, so... Uh, I don't think mine will get worn out. <laughs> we'll see. So there you can see I've gone backwards and forwards loads all over it after starting the seam. And then after that, I'm doing the same, just holding everything together as tight as I can, stitching it together, sped this bit up. You can see me holding it at the back as well, trying to get it to feed through evenly. And I think this was a seam that worked out pretty nicely. Everything looked joined up. So then I go back and do it the other way. Uh, something slightly different to the instructions here is C1 said, um, where did he say? He said start sewing right at the rear. I've started in the middle. Sometimes I like to start in the middle because if something goes wrong it, as you're pulling it all through and stitching it, it gives you less of a problem at the edges when you're where you're attaching it to the body, which I think works out better. And then when you've done your first fin, you've got to put it on your head like a hat. It sadly, it didn't catch it all. But yeah, that's just to make sure it's made properly. Now, if you listen to this all the way through, you'll get a medal, I think. Maybe, I was thinking it would have been cool to do it as a bit of an interview or something with Freddie. Um, but I just wanted to get it sorted this time. So maybe if I do anything like this in the future, I'll try and get the designer involved as well. And... Um, we can kind of watch it and discuss it together as it's going. And one of the reasons I've done this video is it was so helpful with the whales when uh, I think it was Simon Chisnell from Peter Linkites did one for the whales. So yeah, we're on to page five now. It starts to get even more tricky now. I'm lining it up again, mirror image, to make sure I don't mess up because we want all these seams to be internal. Put the bits together, make sure the shapes are right. Here's a future kite fly going past. <laughs> Yep, so holding it together there, just to get, I normally push the needle down just to make sure it's in the right starting position. Do you start and end bit? Um, 
and then just do lots of little short distances each time you can see on this one i'm moving the top along just to get it all to line up and this is what can take a bit of time there's probably people who do it a lot faster than me but um you're not in any rush when you're doing this stuff are you this is the fun of doing it doing a nice job so yeah just finish that off keep moving it across I'm trying to hold everything flat so it's not puckering up or rippling making sure the bottom is uh nice and flat on the top i think when i get onto the longer straight bits you can go a bit faster if you get there and i seem to remember near the end of this it all felt like the curves were lining up nicely again i don't think i make it all the way to the edge of it so whether I'm at the right position or not, I don't know, but I think I was. And then I've super sped it up now. Because you don't need to uh, watch that at slow speed for the other side. But again, because I like it on the left, it's now the opposite. I'm moving the... Um, small piece into position each time sometimes if it does look like it's starting to pucker up a bit you can stop and lift up the foot and help to flatten everything down whenever you do lift the foot up i didn't say this when i was on the eye bit i always lift the foot up when i've got the needle in so everything doesn't slide out of position um, and get messed up and we're going to do the same again with the white pieces which are for the bottom pectoral fins so again, line it out, making sure you're doing it in a mirrored image way. Find your little pieces of white. Got a bit of a free dance in the background there. Oh, you see some of it, sometimes it might look like you've only got one piece, but it's stuck together because they've laser cut it out. So it's like a, a hot cutting method and they must cut out two layers at once in the factory. So some of the pieces, um, if you only think you've got one of them, give it a good rubbing your fingers and it might be stuck together you can just pull it apart and it should be okay normally i just cut all my soft kites out with scissors and sew them together and i've never really had a bad fraying problem i mean i guess if you were someone who was at like 50 festivals a year and getting hundreds of flying hours in things might fray a bit but i've never had a problem so i wouldn't worry about it I've seen people online get really obsessive about using hot cutting for everything. Of course, if you've got raw edges flapping around a lot externally, like on a tail or something, then you want to hot cut it if you're not going to hem it. But for soft kites, stuff that stays on the inside, I've never really had much of a problem. So here you go. Similar to the black ones, um, you just sort of take it steady in sections if you start off in the right position and then make the adjustments so that everything's lined up just go along and it all should be good i'd love to see in one of the factories how fast they make these like experienced sewers i'm guessing they have like a team of people doing different bits each so they get used to it and can do it quickly but yeah it always when i'm when i made the whales and then when i made this kit it got me thinking um how tight the uh, margins must be for kite manufacturers like peterling um because you look at the cost some of these mini kits as well you think how much they must have spent in material and then time to make it um it's it's almost worth just buying things instead of doing it yourself <laughs> if you think how much your time costs so something that I'm doing differently to the instructions again now, based on what I did on the first one, is marking out um, where you're going to sew on the top uh, fin, the dorsal fin. So the instructions tell you to mark out this position later on when you've joined the body together a bit. But I found it pretty difficult because of the curve. It didn't open up very well. So I'm doing it now. As you can, I'm just demonstrating what these weights look like that I'm using. A lot of kite flyers use these. The door stop weights, just like heavy bits of steel with like a rubber base. 
and also a handy rubber edge for picking them up. Um, you can get them on Amazon, eBay, anywhere like that if you have a look. So yeah, I'd recommend those if you're going to do more of this. So again, there's a little ripstop pattern piece included um, for marking up this. I'm just looking forward to where it tells you to actually do it. It's quite far on in the instruction. Page 13, it talks about this of the instructions. So I've put it down. So I've just got yellow tailor's chalk marking on um, that position. It's a lot easier to do it now, I think, uh, than do it later on. And hopefully it won't have all rubbed off by the time you get to that point. So just making sure I'm doing it on the opposite side. So this is the exciting bit. You get to see the colour now um, that you've ordered. So yeah, this one's a nice orange. I've got a yellow, an orange, and I've got a purple and a royal blue. So I've already done the yellow one as well. So I've got two more to go. And then my goal for this and a few other kites is to uh, fly them at the St. Anne's Festival this year. Which is a big festival in the UK now. I think it's probably one of the biggest for numbers of people who are going. And Craig Harby, who's doing a lot of the organising, or probably all of it, I don't know. <laughs> um, he just posted yesterday on Facebook that he's got 170 flyers registered for it this year, um, which sounds amazing. With some from Germany and even someone from New Zealand coming. So I'm absolutely looking forward to that when I can fly these there. Although there'll be little babies, won't they, with all the uh, maxi size kites. Now, what I'm say what I was demonstrating there while I was waffling away, this is I found this was one of the difficult ones because it it's a curved corner where you've got to start the stitch from, so it's hard to know exactly where you're going to start from. So I guess if any of these kits are being made in the future, I'd say for bits where you're going to be starting a seam, don't have a curved bit just have it as an angular bit to help you line up. So this was a technique I used on the other one. I was trying to find like the uh, center of the curve by putting two pieces of material on, not material, sorry, paper, and looking where it all lined up. I'm just drawing a little mark on, but then I think I decided that was rubbish and I'd just sort of try and line the material up the best I can and put some marks on that way. And that seemed to work better. Please let me know if there's a better way of doing this. Yeah, so for future kits, either have it as an angled corner, I think. Or I don't know if when they're doing the laser cutting, they could laser cut a tiny little notch or even just burn a dot in at that position where you're going to start from. But again, whatever I did... As I was stitching, you'll see some bits were sort of left hanging over. And at the time, you'll feel bad about it. But then when you join it all together, um, you don't notice any of it. There was one of these uh, edges when I was sewing the orange on, and I think it was hanging over by quite a lot, you know, like 15 millimeters maybe, if not a bit more. But when I joined everything up, um, it was all just hidden. Um, and it didn't look wrinkled or funny or weirdly shaped. So yeah, just chill out and do your best. <laughs> That's probably not what you're looking from, for from uh, a guide, is it? But, hey. So yeah, I've just got the two bits lined up where I marked it on. That was by putting the two pieces together and looking at the um, sort of curve towards the right hand side of the top image in, uh, on page six. And there you go. This is a fairly easy one. Sped it up here. But as you can see, I'm just doing little bits and then I just keep moving it across to make sure it's in line. Um, and how far am I going each time like that? Maybe uh, like 20 centimeters at a time. 
like seven or eight inches. If there's anyone from America listening. <laughs> there we go. Was it through? And this is it. You can see there. I've slowed it down. Look how much is hanging over there. I thought flipping it. That's bad. But no, it's all right. I'll show you when we get to the bit where we're adding the grey on. I think it is that you can account for that. There you go. Look at that. Woof. I guess it might be worse as well if you've not got one of those feet. I mean, it'd be good to know what Freddie says. Has he had that as well on this piece? Is it just to do with the pattern or is it to do with the machine and how I've pulled it all through? But it did it for my yellow one as well. As you can see, my technique wasn't great. So there, those edges there weren't lined up perfectly as well. So that'll account for some of that hangover. So that bit's done nicely. And then do the same for the other side. I guess while we're watching me have fun lining all this up again. Yeah. St. Tans Festival, I was saying. If you're in the UK, try and get to it. It sounds awesome. I think registration is officially closed, but maybe if you try speaking to Craig nicely, I don't know how much trouble it would be. Even if you can't be an official flyer, it'd be cool just to go along. The beach is massive. Oh, and there was a coloured in plate that my son had done. He wanted to show you all. <laughs> Doing that same sort of line up that edge there, which is like the rear edge of the orange piece with the black piece. And then where I've marked it on. Might be able to see my chalk marks. Get it in position. Do the start. And then just take it through. Ah, another thing maybe to mention to fill the time is um, the stitch size. Everything on this kite is just a straight stitch. You don't need to mess about with zigzag stitching. I've never used zigzag stitching on a kite in my life. I just do straight stitches all the time. And there's a lot of other people who just say that as well. Again, this side... Had that weird effect where it didn't line up. Doing the same thing, trying to line it up and just put a little chalk marker on where how I'm going to line it up when I take it over to the sewing machine. So this is the rear grey piece. So this is the same for all kites this colour out. So we're starting on that top edge. Some people might find this another awkward one because it's um, quite a curved piece. But if you use that technique of just doing bits and then realigning as you go along and holding the front and rear as you go to try and feed it through equally, I think you'll be all right. So I think once I start the seam, I might speed it up. The interesting bit on this is where the orange joins onto the black, where the grey meets it, I'll show you how I accounted for that bit of orange it was hanging over. I'm really taking my time messing about with this, aren't I? <laughs> I think as the old saying is, it's normally uh, measured tw twice, cut once. It's like, I think it feels like I'm checking about 15 times to sew once. Don't 
don't be afraid if you need to unpick something if it's not right it's best to do that and take an extra few minutes than to stuff something up that ruins a whole kite So now we've got some quite big pieces. So I think I'm just sort of trying to get it all lined up under the table. So as it feeds through, it's not all weird and twisted. So I'm lining up my chalk marks and then I'm going to start the stitching. Oof. I can hear someone shouting downstairs. They're very excited about going to this kite festival later in the year because since I've been born, we've not really done much in terms of kiting with other people because it's a bit awkward with little kids and finding toilets and keeping them happy and feeding them and all the rest of it. But they're at an age now where hopefully they'll uh, enjoy it and make it through the day. And I'm looking forward to doing more kiting. So there you go. Look at that. So what I'm doing is I've sewed up to the edge on the black. And then at probably like 15 to 20 centimeters down, I just brought the gray across there and gradually got back to the edge. I thought I'd slowed that bit down, but I think you got the gist of it, didn't you? And you could see it all hanging out. All that will be inside the kite, so you won't even see it. So yeah, just see if I slow it down and demonstrate. Yeah, you can see there. See it hanging over, but when it's inflated, it looks absolutely fine. And even if you pull it flat, it's not even rippled or anything. So there you go. I wonder if it's part of the pattern that causes it, but then it's not a problem. Who knows? Basically, chill out. So here, I think it's sped up, hopefully. And do the same on that side. I can't believe that there's still over an hour left to go. Feels like we're getting there, doesn't it? Maybe I could have sped this up a bit faster as well, but hey. I know when I watched the video of the whale being made, it was just nice to see someone else doing this. Um, I guess a lot of kite makers do this in isolation in a way. You don't get to see someone else doing it or how they make a kite. I mean, I first got into kites um, through my dad. He was a kite flyer um, pretty much soon after I was born, I think. Um, in the early 80s, he was in the Northern Kite Group, one of the first members, I think. And I was taken to kite meetings, as they were then, in my pushchair. <laughs> so, yeah, I've, I've, I, got, I saw how he was doing things and then I started to want to make my own. But other people, there's no guidance, is there? You just see these amazingly massive kites and it must be very intimidating on what you do so then when you've got those two pieces you're now going to sew on the rear part of the tail and it's the black piece which is the top tail i think this is a fairly easy seam now compared to that big curve one you've just done So just check when you're doing all this that you're being consistent with the side where the excess material and the seam is. You want it um, to be inside the kite for each bit. 
this piece has got like a little pointy bit which you can see on page six of the instructions and that helps you get it into the right position People getting told off downstairs for shouting. Don't shout, Daddy's doing his kite thing. <laughs> I think I'm am I putting a chalk mark on again? I think I am. Again, just trying to line it all up. Put a little marker on each piece so that when you take it over to the sewing machine you make sure you start in the same position you can use pins for all this sort of thing but it's a lot of faffing about and i always end up jabbing them in my fingers as well so i prefer just holding it and taking it across and lining things up if you've come from the world of making uh, single line like rotted kites or sport kites this will probably feel like terribly dirty way of sewing <laughs> and not very accurate but hey it works really nice so yeah don't worry I'm just having a look at these. These are parts of the mouth and the valve system. That's the very last thing we'll do in one hour's time. Flipping heck. I might have to go before then and finish this another day. If dinner will be ready. So, right, you got to get these big white side pieces that have got the cutouts for the fin and then get the very first bits that we did and we're going to sew these on now. So again, make sure you're doing like the mirror image of it. I think this is an easy one because it's going from some edges, definite edges. So, yep, just a simple straight seam. There we go. Boom. Same on this side. I mean, one, one thing to say about that glue stick, when you first do it, it looks terrible and you can see marks. But after a few days when it's dried out, um, this is going back to the initial eyes bit. If you give it a bit of a sort of rub, the different pieces, between your fingers um those sort of dark marks that you can see there on that eye um they'll go because the glue dries up nicely ah black pectoral fin onto the side piece now this is an interesting seam you've got a very tight curve here and like opposing curves so some of you might want to take this bit slowly I think I take it pretty slowly, <laughs> but I can imagine this is a difficult one, especially depending on the setup of your sewing machine, if you haven't got that top feed. I was having a look at these sewing machines, so if you do, if you are interested in one, in the UK, I think brand new, all you need to go for is like the very basic faff machine. I think it's like 
the lowest model they do actually, but it has make sure it's got this uh, foot on. Um, it's got no computer control stuff on. It's just a nice mechanical sewing machine. Um, and like I say, this one is over 20 years old and I've made loads. It's done a lot of stitching on soft kites and I probably should have had it serviced before now, but I'm only just going to get it done this week actually. Um, and everything's been great. So good quality works well with uh, ripstop. Press my pedal to get the needle to hold it foot down. Oh, and you can see that awkward curve coming up. So just do lots of little short bits. So you start with do the reverse seam, moving it across. It'll all look like it's puckering up and feel terrible, but try your best to keep it flat. I'm lifting the foot up and down a bit if it's all wrinkling up or if the material's not moving across enough. Um, and once you get around that curve, uh, you're onto a nice easy straight in the middle before you get the dreaded curve at the rear <laughs> coming up as well. But you can worry about that when you get to it. I feel like Bob Ross talking about paintings. Just need a little squirrel on my shoulder. So here we go. Oh, a nice, lovely straight bit. Just a little bit of alignment as you're going along. But you think, oh, I've got that past that curve now. Great. I know some tips people have made is you could just put, a, you could pin the material in the center. So if you're suffering from puckering, it'll hold it all together in the center and you'll know how far off you are at that point. And you could do a bit of sort of pleating to make up for it, which is where you just fold over the seam side that's the material side that's got the excess on to bring it together. And again, little bits of pleating like that. You won't see it when it's together and made. I've recently been trying to make my own dragon, which was like a sort of modified plush plan. And there was quite a lot of pleating I had to do on that because I don't, I think when someone had designed the little plush, um, you don't have to be so accurate when you're sewing little toys together. But then when you, I took something that was meant to be like a, you know, six to 12 inch toy and scaled it up to be, about seven meters long um so the errors get worse but yeah pleating you can do oh look i'm showing off that that's all nice and not messed up so speed it up and we'll do the same for the other side and i think for this situation well what did it, i think i was going to start on the other side and then i wimped out and went the other way It just feels wrong having your material on the right hand side. I don't know why. It's like one of those weird, are you left or right handed? But hey, get through it, sew it on. And I think it came together nicely again. So then once we've done those bits, just check it looks okay and you've not got any terrible wrinkling or anything. What are we doing next? Uh, we're going to, so the white pectoral fins on. And this is like onto a belly piece. Page nine of the instructions. So get your belly out. <laughs> and uh, get ready to sew your fin on. Now again, this was one which I thought was pretty awkward to work out where the start was where you're meant to start sewing because um, it's on a sort of nicely curved bit and C1 says start sewing um, from the front I did wonder whether it'd be easier to start sewing from the back because you've got more of a definite position to go from but I think I followed the instructions like a good boy and came from the front one thing to say is I'm saying C1, but that's what he's put in brackets after his name in the instructions. So again, apologies if I'm pronouncing people's names incorrectly. I 
think I'm just using a regular pencil here because it's a white piece. Just a little mark on there. You could put Taylor's chalk on if you want. I think I was kind of looking for that position where I thought I should start from. Or what am I drawing on? Ah, I think because it was like a flat piece where the fin's going to go on, it should be 10 millimeters in. I think I was drawing that position on and then it'll help me. It's probably a fair bit of head scratching going on here. Is that right? Yeah, check it again. Go on, take it over and do it. I'm using white thread for most of this. I mean, on some other projects, I've always switched between black and white. So when it was two black pieces together, I would have used black. But because it's all internal, um, I think the white's okay. I do switch to black a bit later on for some things. But that's just where I'm attaching the dorsal fin, I think. Because it's like an external seam. But we will talk about that in a bit. What am I doing? Am I starting at that end? Or am I going to do it from the other end? I don't remember what I did now. Hmm. I've made the decision. I marked it all on from that other end and then I've decided to start from the rear and ignore C1, have I? So you decide what you want to do. I did this and it seemed to work okay and it was easier to uh, work out where to start from. So, yeah, feel free to do that and it probably won't give you many problems. It didn't give me any problems. So, yeah, I've just sped it up because there's not much to say. Just doing all the alignment like before. Check it looks alright. Yep. Stuff it under the table. Nope. Put it on the table. Then go over and do the other side. Should have some filling music, really, shouldn't I? There we go. Z -z 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 Sorry, on. And what we're we doing next? You kind of feel like you're getting through it now when you get to this position, don't you? That's why I can't believe there's still so long to go. Like. Seriously, how can it take me nearly an hour to do the rest of this? So, what we're going to do now is attach the side piece to the top piece. So we want to get the black, orange and grey piece out. And also that side piece with the eye on. And we're going to start joining it together from the front. And this is curved, so it feels a bit tricky. But then I found where the eye on the black piece joins onto the orange or the colored piece. That is a tricky little curve to do because you've got like two opposing curves to sew together. So just like all the others, take your time as you're doing it. It feels like it's wrong and it's all sticking out. But again... I think around this area, there's actually something in the pattern to give it a bit of 3D shape or either it ended up that way when I did mine. Because when you inflate it, it feels like the eyes have got a little bit of shape to them, which is nice. I think I'm doing this bit slow just to show you what um, I mean about that tricky bit. And then after that, it speeds up.
Here we go. Coming down. Getting near to that orange. And then you'll start to get your curves coming in. Again, you can see a bit hanging over where it didn't match up. Just get up to the seam and then bring it across gradually. This is where you hold them together and think, holy moly, this is going to be tricky. But if you just go slow and do little bits at a time and hope for the best, I think you'll be okay. I think we've got a bit of Lego construction going on in the background there. If you're wondering what that weird box is, it was like a cardboard train that we built. It's been school holidays, so the guys have been colouring it in each day. So here we are, we're going around this nasty curve. I'm doing the old trick of doing a little bit, moving it, trying to make sure everything's flat and nice and straight as it's being fed in. Long piece. Also, when you're doing your little bits, you might want to lift the foot up a bit so you can move the material around. If you leave the needle stuck in while you're lifting your foot and moving the material, it helps. Again, I'd love to see someone in the kite factory doing this and see how they do it quickly. Need to make a pilgrimage to uh, New Zealand one year. <laughs> see if I can get a cup of tea and watch them make some kites just go back and have a look at it now push it out have a look what it looks like do I keep it fast? yeah I do oh, I thought. And you can see the eye looks like it oh it's sticking out a bit it's meant to be like that Freddie's done some magic with uh, Blender. <laughs> I mean, talking about 3D design, I think this, I read this was the difference between the original Peter Lim Rays and like the Andreas Fishbacker version. Um, the original ones... I think would just flat pieces sewn together. I may be wrong. I read it somewhere, I think. And then the AF ones have got more curving to them. So the edges aren't just flat pieces. Um, it's got shaping in there so you don't get that overstuffed pillow effect. They may well have changed it on more recent ones, but who knows? And you can stuff them out of the way for a bit. And now we're getting even further along. You don't stuff it out of the way. I don't know why I said that. Bring it back out and find that belly piece where you sewn on the white uh, fin and we're going to join this fin together now so for some reason when I was doing this one it took me ages to work out which way to align it so I think I sped it up to say boring you to death while I stood there like an idiot for 10 minutes working out what to do but well, basically, you've got to get it so that um, it's looking sort of inside out. So where you've sewn these fins onto the belly and the side piece, uh, you want it to all come together that way. Here we go. Sped it up now because I finally understood what I was doing. Then, <laughs> and you want to start at the front of the fin and sew round and join it together. 
And then once I've done that, I carried on and sewed all the way to the rear. The instructions kind of make it as extra steps, but you can just carry that seam on all the way to the back. And then after you've done that, you can do the uh, front piece again, which is in the lower bit of page 11. These little weights are good for just uh, stopping it all sliding off the table as well while you're doing it all, lining things up. I was really worried about doing this wrong. I don't know why. Probably because it's such a long seam to unpick <laughs> if you do it wrong. There you go. So I'm, I'm looking where the fin is joined on and just using that as a marker for where to hold it together when I put it under the needle. Now, because you've got a big piece, you want to get it under the table. See, I'm trying to hold it all in position. Get it under your needle. Bring your needle down just to hold it. Then you can line it up a bit better. Get your foot down and start going. This was fairly easy, this bit, I think. Because it's similar shaped things going together, not like opposite curves. You've just got to keep going and making sure everything's flat, nothing else is getting snagged up on it. And just adjusting as you go. And there we go, we've sped up now. When I say sped up, I mean I've sped the video up. That isn't the speed that I'm sewing. So then when I'm getting near to that end, I'm, I'm, I'm holding the two seams together for the little rear shapers, as I'll call them. You want to make sure it's all pulled out so that nothing's going to get joined together that shouldn't. Um, and then when you saw my head, I was just checking inside. Yep, nothing's gone wrong. And then carry it on all the way down to the end. When I start to get near to the end, I'll hold the seams where it joins onto the belly and the side piece together there. Um, and if it hasn't fed anything through properly, you could do a little bit of uh, pleating there to get it into position. So then I just carry straight on now and go right down to the end. And you want to sew right down to that fin and then back round to the little pointy bit at the rear. Now this bit looks like you might have gone wrong, but again, I think Freddy has done some clever shaping here. So when you get to that like outer curve, which I'm coming towards now, the the sharp turn. I've got hairy ears, flipping onions. The, it looks like it's not lined up. And I think it worried me so much I had to go and get my other one out. Um, and have a look what it looked like to remind myself. I also did it wrong the first time round. Somehow I managed to sew this rear bit of the tail together in a really strange way. But anyway, nope, you do keep on going and you go round. And like I say, it feels like it's wrong, but trust me, when you inflate it, you'll see how nicely shaped it is. I've slowed it down now on the video, I think, just so that you can see it at normal speed. Bring it all through nicely. And I think it's the black is bigger than the white piece. If I remember correctly. Or it might be the other way. But just keep the edges together. And go around. You might have to do a bit of the old lifting the foot up. Yep. <laughs> to let you move it enough. Just using one of those weights there to stop it being dragged off the table. Just keep going. Trust me, it will be okay. I think I left it on fast speed again because it's pretty much the same thing. So starting at the front of the fin and going round and then working your way right down to the back. 
I could have sped this one up massively, but hey, you can enjoy it if you're still listening all the way through. <laughs> Here we go. All lined up on that first bit where the two seams come together onto the body and just go along making sure everything's lined up as you go. When you get onto the bit where you've got the shaping pieces, make sure it's all pulled out and you're holding them together and you're not going to cause any sort of weird puckers or bits to be pulled in once you've gone round from the thin bit you're okay and you can tell if this is coming together because these curves should be pretty similar as you're sewing there we go make sure that everything's okay there if you do need to pucker anything in not pucker it I forgot the word. Pleat it in a bit. Do it before you get to that uh, join of the fin onto the body. And now you're just onto this long one all the way down. It's a pretty nice seam to do. Easy one. <laughs> and hopefully I won't spend as long faffing around when I get right down to the rear fin. Just take it right round. Oh! Here are the future kite flyers back. What are they showing me? Ah, oh, some Lego figures. Oh, look at this one. They wanted me to show you. Special robot he's built. <laughs> but yes, so having things pre-laser cut is amazing. I've looked, but I've not found a service near me where you could send a pattern and material or even have them cut it out for you with ripstop. Um, that would be amazing. I mean, there was hope that Andrew Beatty was going to do that. A few years ago, he was talking about setting up like a sort of kite workshop where you could go and do things like that. And if it went well, he was saying he might have a laser cutter or something. But um, I guess everything that's happened in recent times with COVID, it's kind of uh, stopped that sort of thing from going ahead. But that would have been awesome. Or someone that would offer that service. Ah, I think I'm waving my hands at the, that point because the bobbin ran out at the bottom. I'm always surprised that it lasts so long. You have the joy of seeing me do it, but in super fast speed. And here we are, back to sewing again. Just finish that bit off, where that bobbin so rudely ran out of thread. That looks pretty nice around the chin there. So now we've got that on both sides. We can join the top of the head together and put two extra bridle points in. So you want to take these pieces wrong side out and do the top seam. Similar to before, I think the instructions say you can um, sew the ribbons in at this point onto one half. 
um, and then do the seam all the way down. I think I just did it as I got to them. And hopefully that won't cause any issues. So I'm just lining everything up, making sure those tabs are right together and starting from the edge. It's a pretty easy seam this because everything matches. Start sewing. And then when you get near to it, make sure you leave a bit of room. You can bring your ribbon tab over. I kind of left it sticking out as far as the tabs stick out the markers. I guess as long as you're consistent with what you do, it won't um, mess up your bridal lengths too much. And then do the old backwards and forwards a few times. You'll see when it comes through the machine what I've done. I'm kind of working my way out here going backwards and forwards. I did a few um, on the actual seam position. Another thing, I go back a bit and then come in at an angle so that I can carry on that seam okay without issue. Nice, and then just take it up towards the other tab. So where I've got a seam coming up, making sure that those two bits line up nicely. And then the next position to hold and make sure lines up is where the next tabs are. I want those to be on top of each other. Work your way up to those and then get your next piece of ribbon tab and uh, sew that in. It seems to fold pretty nicely this. So if you fold it over and give it a push with your nail, um, It'll stay in position. So work your way up to this tab. It's a bit tricky to hold it all if you do it this way, but it's not that difficult. Hold it in place while you get the first stitch through. And then go backwards and forwards. And like I did, it probably doesn't hurt to do it quite a few times and work your way to the outer side just to give it something to hold it in place. Should you ever be trying to fly these in a gale force wind? <laughs> Which I guess you won't. But you never know. So then I'm working my way back so that I can meet up with the actual stitch line and then carry that seam on until you get to the air holes on the back where the dorsal fin's going to go. So you really want that to line up. So as you're getting close to that, um, I'd start to do some pleats if you need to so that your air holes are in alignment and aren't offset. I think I had a very tiny offset when I got to it for mine, but it was only a, a few millimetres, so I didn't think it mattered. You're starting to get a lot of material now between your legs that you have to work through ah and here it's not my sewing machine i can't remember it ever doing this before it kind of all got snagged up 
I think when I wound that bobbin on, um, because I was being videoed, I did it different to how I normally do and I didn't get enough tension in it. So there's some like loose bits, um, which you might have noticed as I was threading it. So yeah, it all sort of puckered up and snagged. So um, I managed to sort of pull it straight and uh, go again, but very strange. Like I say, this sewing machine has never had any work done and I probably should have been oiling it and I haven't. Um, it's due for its service, hopefully this week. I'm very lucky that there's a very good sewing machine and craft shop nearby. And apparently they have a gentleman who used to be an engineer for FAF who's now retired and he takes the sewing machines off and um, does services on them. So that's great. Hopefully it'll all be okay after that. And I won't have to have an excuse to buy a new one. I'd rather buy kites or material. I keep pestering Mr. BT about my material. <laughs> if he's listening, it doesn't matter, dude. <laughs> Take your time. I've got plenty of whale, not whales, I've got one whale to make and two dolphins. And I want to modify some other things I've got. Which I think I've spent a bit of time looking at it. Now, fitting this dorsal fin. Um, might be an unusual stitch to do because what you're going to do is take the cut edge, um, fold it over, and it says put a 10 millimeter inside seam in. Now, I folded it over by about 10 millimeters, and then I kept my seam pretty close to the edge, probably closer to about 5 mil to the edge, and stitched my way around. And that's how I've always done these sort of seams on kites and. I've not done loads of them, but on the whales I did it that way, and then on this dragon that I've made recently, I've had to do a few seams like this, where the wing's attached, and everything seems okay. So, again, um, I started from the front and worked my way to the back, and then stopped, and then went back to the front and um, did the other side. I always find when I do these sort of um, seams, the rear piece never quite matches up where you've marked it on where you think it should. Um, but all you need to do is bring it towards that join between the two halves of the body. And when you go back and do the other side, you'll usually be able to get it to line up. Now you can see the marks I've made are slightly offset um, because of how the body went together. But I think I just started in the centre of them, went round and everything looks absolutely fine. So fold it over, get the two, get those sort of, that seam together, that's your marking point. Get it under there, held together, get your needle down to hold it in place. Then get your foot down and... Fold a bit over, stitch, fold a bit over, stitch, fold a bit over, stitch. Just keep going around like that. Once you're round past the front curve, um, it'll be easy on the straight. I think one thing to say, when I mark the positions on for the dorsal fins, you'll find that, that I think the template wasn't symmetrical front to back. I think I had the fatter bit at the front and the thinner bit at the back. I don't think the instructions made it clear which way around, but I kind of was thinking about it in terms of an aerofoil shape where you'd have um, that fatter bit um, at the front tapering off towards the back. There's only a slight difference, but if you look at it, you'll see on that ripstop template that was provided. Now, this is where I've started in white thread and thought, hold on a minute, I'd rather do this in black actually. So you've now got me unpicking that and then I think when I edited this, I just cut it out. You don't need to see me changing a bobbin. So pull it out. And then we're starting again. This time with black thread. Just because this is something you'll see on the outside. So I thought it was nice to uh, have it matching. Although saying that, even if you did it in white, 
once you step back a bit, you wouldn't notice when it was in the air. So if you only got one colour, don't worry. Just uh, make do with what you've got. There we go, we're around the corner now, and it's a lot easier just to do these straight bits. Fold it over a bit. And I wasn't being super accurate with getting 10 mil folded over, I was just kind of roughly folding over about the same each time. And that level of accuracy seemed okay. So here we go, we take it around. I think I left this at normal speed just so people could watch because like I say it's a bit of a, a different seam you might not have done it before if you've not done these sort of creature or character shapes you don't sort of do this sort of thing normally folding over and joining onto another so then you start coming onto these uh, the rear shaping bits and you're starting to get towards the curve and bring it around to the back like I say as you're folding it over you might not match up with your marking lines exactly but just try and get it to come back to that middle seam you can see what I'm doing there getting close just fold and stitch Also, while you're doing this, you're trying to make sure everything's flat as well, like the material underneath stays flat and nothing's getting pulled in a funny way. There you go. That's half of it done. And I think this was one seam now where I've had to work on the opposite side. Like I was saying, I don't normally like doing that. Now I remember to go underneath and cut your bobbin thread off there. Yep, so here's an example of me doing it in an awkward fashion. <laughs> yep, cut that thread off there so it doesn't get all messed up when you're doing your backwards and forwards. And I'll sped it up this time. But the same sort of thing probably easier to see it from this side actually if I don't get my big head in the way I'm just changing my bobbin over again back to white exciting So now what do we do? I think this is the exciting bit actually. You're going to sew the um, belly together, the two pieces. So this is going to start at the front, put the last bridal tag ribbon in. And it's a fairly easy one. Although saying that, I still stare at the instructions for far too long, trying to work out what to do next. <laughs> Thinking, is it really as easy as that? Yes, it is. So like before, you've got a real long bit of material now, so you want to kind of get it in some kind of neat order under the table between your legs. and. Um, just start by holding together the pieces at the front end, making sure that that bridal tab marker lines up. Get it in, get your needle through it, and put your foot down. Now, there might be some people with fancy machines out there going, what's all this put your foot down? Because I think some, as soon as you touch the pedal, the foot goes down and the needle goes in. Now that sounds amazing, uh, and maybe one day I'll try one. 
but I don't think the majority have those. I think Mr. Beatty does, from what he's said on Facebook. This is the thing, I'm following guys like that, reading, looking out for any tips and bits of info that you can get, because it just seems so few and far between to find information on making these kites. Backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, the old tab on method, and then come back to your seam line, and you'll see the whole kite coming across the table now as I go. We call it a kite, don't we? Oh, maybe we call it an unstable kite. More honourable to be a kite than a windsock. I suppose the definition of a windsock is more something you'll have on an airfield showing you wind direction and speed whereas again as I was getting towards the black I've just sort of angled and faded it in towards there and it looks horrendous in this inside out way but once you do the old all creatures great and small now um, there'll be no issues and if anyone doesn't know what that is it was a TV program about vets this is always the best day you go, I'm showing you my horrendous, but it's not too bad. Yes, so you're kind of sticking your hand up inside the animal now and uh, pulling its uh, outsides inward, kind of, or making it go inside out. Oh, but first, don't forget your little label of authenticity. So if you're flying your kites and the kite police think you've got an illegal kit, they can come and ask you to show them the label. And I imagine if you don't show them the label, you'll immediately get executed. Either that or shunned by the kite community, maybe stoned to death. Although I could think of worse ways. Did you see what I did there? Anyway, so I'm sewing it into the uh, top seam where the two top black pieces come together. Sort of probably near to where the side fins are just fold it over folds nicely if you run your nail against it um and you're done you know if anyone is thinking of uh, copying these and making their own i almost don't see the point for the price because to mess around having to copy the plan and do all the messing and marking out you may as well just buy the kit so don't even do it so there thumbs up i'm pretty put chuffed now that's like nearly all of the main bits done so we'll pull it the right way out and then we'll just put these beige mouthpieces on which work as an awesome valve system I should have taken that picture of the sewing machine off while I was doing this. I'm just making sure everything looks okay on that mouth bit, and it did. If you do struggle with that really long seam, you could pin at a, a few positions, and then you can see how far out it's getting. Um, another option is just to do half of it, and then or even three quarters of it and then work from the rear and come back and meet yourself. And when you meet yourself, you'll see if you need to do any um, of the sort of pleating technique. When I have turned it inside out, I like to push all the, make sure these fins are like fully pushed through down to the points. 
That's what you could just see me doing there. When, oh, and I forgot what I was going to do. It doesn't tell you to do this in the instructions, and there'll probably be some people horrified and say, why are you doing it? But I am cutting the blackout behind the eyes um, in like an applique fashion. Just wondering if it'll let a little bit more light through, although it probably won't because the rear of the kite's black and you got the colour there anyway. Um, it just seemed a bit dark, but, you know, probably doesn't matter, does it? But here you go, I've sped it up. I'm sure you've seen a man cutting ripstop before. So now you get these pieces and you kind of have the dolphin the right way up and you sew these on. So what I'm doing here is I'm just folding it over so I can mark where to start because you start from the center at the tip on each one. So if you fold it over and then sort of rub your nail along on a hard surface, you get a nice little crease. And that could be enough for you, but I've just used a pencil just to put a little mark on at the end to mark where to start. And then we're going to start from um, the nose or the chin and work your way back. Um, towards the seam between the white and the black. Uh, side bits where they come together just before the eye and if you read the instructions it tells you to kind of sew down to there and then when you get to that corner sort of taper out your stitch towards the edge I found that when you're doing this you've got to hold everything very carefully to make sure you're not going to sew any tucks in or sort of snag on anything behind it so there, Mark, now, I think I just crack on and get it done. So, yes, that's a good point. I'm just flicking the tab there. That is very close to this. So, as you're doing it, make sure you don't catch that. I think C1 says that in the instructions as well. So, I think I'll do this first one at normal speed in case it helps anyone it's a bit awkward because you've got the curve but you'd be a pro if you've got to this point there we go round the curve sew it on easy and you'll be left with a bit of sort of loose material, but don't worry about that because after you've attached this piece and the other piece, you'll then be sewing it together and it makes quite an impressive vent uh, mechanism. It sort of brings the two flaps together and stops the air coming out and it's really effective. In fact, if you try and deflate the kite, you'll probably struggle to do it. I'll show you what I did when I do the inflation test after we finish sewing. Like I think on some kites like this, you'd probably want to put a zip on to help get the air out. But I guess the kit doesn't include a zip because sewing zips on is a right difficult job. So um, it's probably easy not to try and explain how to do it and have people mess it up. I never seem satisfied with myself when I've sewn a zip on. 
it's one of those sort of things that you sew on and it's functional and it works, but um, I'm not proud of it. Sorry, I've sped it up now. I'll go around and do the other side and then do it for the um, bottom lower mouth piece as well. But yeah, this valve is uh, pretty amazing. Saves you having to have like a mesh piece with a flap over it, that sort of thing, which is common. Or even the ones where people cut big holes and have a flap. I'm not so keen on them. Other side now. I've already marked up the center so I can line it up and start. We're nearly there now, <laughs> 10 minutes of video left. This has been like longer than some movies, hasn't it? It'd be nice if all your sewing could be done at 700% speed. Need to have my brain reprogrammed. I'm a faster machine. <laughs> Are we done? No, other side. Again, make sure you don't catch the tab when you're doing this bit. Doing valves and vents always feels messy as well. Like those bits where you have to taper it in, it didn't feel like stuff was 100% lining up um, or like there might be little gaps. When you come to do this tapering bit, make sure everything's pulled out so you don't snag anything else. But you know what, when it was all done and it was pulled the right way out, it all looked okay. In fact, it looked great. This feels awkward because you don't want to get snagged up um, in anything else underneath it. You just want to sew these edges together of the flap. So make sure you pull everything out. I'm putting my hands in there, making sure everything's out of the way. Do your back seam, making sure you don't go over anything. <clears throat> And then just hold it together and sew down. Now, funnily, one side matched up really nicely. Um, you can see there, it aligns really well on this one. But on this kite, and also the yellow one I did, the other half, when I come to sew it, there's um, it's not in alignment, which is very odd. However, again, nothing looks out of place when you inflate it. And it all still works really well. So you'll see what happens when I finish. Um, and I wouldn't be too worried if it happens for you like that as well. Have I sped this bit up? I can't remember. Maybe I didn't. So yeah, once you get started and you get clear of everything else underneath, you've just got to make sure you're not going to catch anything as you do the rest of it. And then this is it. Once you've done this, you can celebrate. See, look at that gap. It's like 10 to 15 mil. That's happened on both of them that I've made. How odd. Let me know if it happens to everyone like that. There. But hey, it doesn't seem to matter. I religiously cut off all my bits. When I say religiously, I mean I always do it. It's probably the wrong word, but I think you understand. Hopefully. So here we go. We're done. Am I checking it out? Push it right. Are you going to get a thumbs up? And in a minute you'll have an exciting, different video shot. So excuse our messy house. This is the result of two five-year-old boys. Twins. I'm just showing you my wonderful um, inflation device. I was looking at different ones for a long time and 
I used to use hair dryers, but they're so noisy, and even on a cold setting, they always seem to get a bit warm. And then I know some people use like um, bounty castle inflators, um, like dog dryers, but they're all real, really loud and annoying. This is um, an inline bathroom duct fan or the kind of fan you'd have for a hydroponic system. So if you look on Amazon for that sort of thing, you'll find quite a few. <clears throat> and they're pretty much silent, very low noise. And I've put a bit of mesh over the back with tie wraps and a bit of tape uh, to stop anyone getting their fingers in because you could touch the fan and cut your finger. Um, and then at the front side, I've just made a tube of ripstop that fits on. And it's great for inflating kites like this. And especially if it say it was something you'd made yourself and you wanted to have it inflated for quite some time while you're adding bridles. It's really good for that because you're not annoying your family or your neighbours if you're out in the garden doing it. So look how well this is inflated. I'm really happy with it. Everything seems really nice. <clears throat> There's a few wrinkles, but you'll always get that. And once it's a, a up in the sky, you won't really notice when it's wobbling about and away from you. I don't really think you could avoid that. <clears throat> Please tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> so, yep, yeah, you've just got four bridle lines. One that goes on that dorsal fin at the back, which is 100 centimetres long. And then you've got these three others, one, two and three. Now, the instructions don't tell you where one, two and three go. But in my case, for the two kits, one is the lower um, mouth bridle, which is 69 centimetres. Two is the 54 in the middle and three is the 75, I think. So, also, if you lay them out on the floor, you can see that three is the longest, one is the second longest, and two is the shortest. So this is like a simple overhand knot. You put like a stopper in, and then you tie another overhand knot and pull it so the stopper knot goes up to it. And this is quite a standard knot that we use in the kiting world. So just tie these on. I'd love to have a massive place to live that had room for like an outdoor workshop so I could build some big kites in it. Uh, but at the moment I'm limited to a four meter run. Beyond that, it gets a bit awkward. But hey, things could be worse, couldn't they? <laughs> it's quite lucky. So I think I was going to put it down. Wait and see. When I pull this uh, inflation tube out the mouth, just watch how long it stays inflated for. This vent system is really amazing. So I've switched back to normal speed now, I think, just so you can see how long it stays inflated. Um, it's really great. So if you were flying it on a day where the wind was up and down, the kite would stay lovely and inflated. Look at that. It's like a balloon. Beautiful, eh? And there you can see, having the large stitches doesn't really have a negative effect on uh, retention of air in there either. Even at the 4 or 5 mil that I have it at, it's... Um, you still get a nice tight seam. So, yep. Almost done now. I'm going to deflate. You'll see what I do. I just, first time I did it, I just tried to push the air out like that. No chance. But if you reach in and turn the vent inside out like that and start to push it, you can get a bit more air out. You've probably got to hold on to it, actually, if you want to do it. What am I doing now? I think I joined that set of bridles to the um, dorsal fin point just to try and minimise things getting mixed up. But it's not so much of a problem, is it? Because you've only got three. 
So even like that, it's slow. I think when I got it down to a certain position, I reached over to the front and held it open a bit. Yep, there we go. Look at that deflation. So thank you for listening and watching. I hope this has helped. Please let me know if it has or hasn't. Um, also, any tips on what could have been better? Please, any advice, positive, negative, please tell me. Uh, and I'll bear that in mind in case I ever feel the need to do this again in the future. But it takes a lot longer than you'd imagine. <laughs> Recording, editing took a, a few evenings. And then I've just had to watch the whole thing and talk. But yeah, I'd like to do it again. So yeah. Maybe if there's another kit, I could do a video like this in advance of the kit being released if people were interested in that. And hopefully I'd get the quality even better. So there we are. Nice little backpack. Uh, and my assistant will model the backpack and we'll have a success of building the kite dance party. Here we go. Look at that lovely backpack. Come and see the kite flying at St. Anne's. Thank you, everybody.